What's going on guys? My name is Chris. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at my 1997 Honda Civic with a Jackson Racing Supercharger and specifically we're going to be looking at the AEM Water Methanol Injection Kit. I've had a couple of questions recently about the hows and whys of the kit, so we're just going to go over that real quick. Um, if you're unfamiliar with water meth injection, it is exactly what it sounds like. Um, you inject a blend of water and methanol, which is essentially race gas, into your intake stream. Um, and sometimes you do this in lieu of an intercooler on a turbocharged setup, or in my case, a supercharged setup. Um, main purpose, again, is to keep intake temperatures down. It also helps to raise the um, octane rating technically and give you a little bit of boost uh, in that to help prevent uh, detonation um, and control temperatures. Um, in my case, this supercharger doesn't come with an intercooler or an easy way to do it um, unless you can get John at LHT Performance to make you one, which I'm waiting on him to do again. Um, so the kit I'm using specifically is the AEM Water Methanol Injection Kit. I will link that specific kit in the description below. But there are other kits out there um, from companies like Snow Performance. Um, and there's a, a couple others if you go on like Summit Racing or things like that. Um, the fluid itself, um, there's a couple of different ways to go about that. Um, Snow Performance makes what's called boost juice um, and of course this jug's empty but it's a red 50-50 mix it's 50% methanol 50% water um, so there's no compromises um, if this is about ten dollars a jug uh, if you want to go cheaper a lot of people will run straight up um, windshield washer fluid the generic blue kind is actually 20% methanol and the rest is water you'll find that anywhere for about you know two to three dollars a jug and it saves you uh, time and money uh, if that meets your needs. I decided to go 50-50 mix just because I know what I do with this car and I wanted as much safety as possible. Um, you don't want to go 100% methanol. Um, that's not as good. Your third option if you don't want to do either windshield washer fluid or the boost juice, if you're lucky enough to have a gas supplier near you like a VP Racing Fuels, you could always go buy a 100% methanol from them and cut it yourself with water to try and save some cost or if you're going through a lot of it. Um, speaking of quantity, a gallon lasts me probably, oh, I'd say a few months. I don't drive this car much, but when I do, it's hard to stay out of the throttle, let's be honest. Um, but uh, I'd say almost three or four years ago, I purchased four gallons and I just put the last of the fourth gallon in. Um, so, you know, your mileage is going to vary based on your driving habits, but it's, you know, $10 across a few months isn't that bad, honestly. Um, now, why do you want to do meth injection other than the, specifically for a supercharger, you want to do meth injection to help cool the rotors. Since this thing has no uh, intercooler on it, intake temps get out of hand, but at the other time, heat builds up in the supercharger itself. So the meth injection helps cool the rotors because if the rotors expand too much, they touch the housing, bad things happen. So in my case, we're injecting here in the intake stream to help cool the rotors off because we don't want them to overheat and touch the housing. The downside to this is that unless you have your rotors coated specifically um, with a special coating, um, and I believe you can find uh, service at like the high speed labs if you search online, it will eat into the coating and wear off the rotors eventually because of the steam it creates from the heat. Um, it's a trade-off I was willing to make. I use this car for autocross, so you know, having as much power for those few seconds as possible um, you know, is, is important to me. Eventually I'll get the blower rebuilt and get the, the rotors coated. Um, again, your setup and your mileage may vary. Um, as much research as I've done online, post uh, Spraying directly into the intake manifold poses no additional benefit, um, at least for this type type of setup. Um, you know, a lot of the big blower guys with their V8 drag cars go back and forth about which one's correct. Everybody's setup's different. You'll have to make that decision based on your needs and you know what your tuner or engine builder suggests. So now that we've kind of go over the housing wise, let's just walk through the components 
of the system. I'll walk you around the car, we'll show you all the, the layouts, um, how it gets tuned, and you know, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. All right, so the main component of the kit, I guess, obviously, would be the injector itself. And here you can see mine. It's tapped. Um, they give you a weld-in bong. It's tapped into my intake tube, and it's actually spraying this way. And the reason you want to do that is because it gets sucked back in, and it helps it atomize. Um, it's a very similar concept to the guys running nitrous and stuff. Um, you'll find that they spray away from the intake manifold because it helps atomize the you know the, the combustible and it gets you a better mix um, this is the feed line coming from the trunk which we'll go to in a second um, and up here and it's probably not easy to see at the moment there is a T and a boost reference source right here also running back to the trunk so let's go ahead and walk around there and I'll show you the other components of the system excuse my garage got a one car garage it's always a mess all right so we're back here in the trunk here are the other main components of the system here we have i opted to get the one and a half gallon um, tank they have a smaller option if that works for you and the pump so you'll see there's an electrical connector right here on the side that's running power to it um and it's also got a um a low level cutoff that way it doesn't try and run the pump dry and burn it out the pump itself has an in and out flow um, and this is all um, push lock tubing. So basically it's going to take your fluid from here, push it up to the injector and spray it um, on either you can either set it up for a trigger or it has parameters that you can set up in the control unit, which I have installed up in the cabin of the car. So let's go ahead and take a look in my glove box because that's where I chose to put it. So hopping in the car. Again, excuse the mess. We uh, went to an autocross and basically put it away wet. But right here in the glove box, we have my control unit. Um, there's a couple of different ways to do this, to set it up. Um, basically, the two knobs on here, one controls the flow rate, the other controls the cutoff point for when it will start injecting based on your boost reference. Mine's set for about four PSI, which is the left knob. The reason I chose four PSI is because it's very easy to make small amounts of boots just cre creeping around or driving around. Um, you know, it's a it's it's very linear when you step on the throttle. So even taking off from a stoplight, sometimes you can get like one or two psi just accelerating normally. So we set it at four. That way, you have to kind of be in the throttle, and then I let the tuner decide the flow rate based on his experience because I didn't want to. Um, you know, guess at it myself and risk having more engine damage. Um, so that's the control unit. Uh, I did not research into whether or not the Honda S300 could control this. This seems simple enough and it didn't really add any extraneous wiring to the build. And if you come over here on the other side of the dash, you can see we have an arming light. The system in my case is always armed. That light will illuminate green. Um, when the system is active so it's not only does it tell you it's working but you can also monitor it to make sure you don't have an error and it's not spraying when it doesn't need to um, causing unnecessary use or throwing your air fuel mixture off um, so that's the majority of the system there and again um, you know your mileage may vary is this the right setup for you maybe maybe not um, if you have a B series and you can get LHT performance to make you an intercooler you're probably going to get better results out of that um, but this worked in my case since they were no longer in production um, you know and also it doesn't hurt anything this will not hurt your performance um, if you have it on there, it can only help in the long run. People have done it on naturally aspirated cars. People do it on turbocharged cars where they can't get an intercooler. Like if you're trying to cram something into an engine bay that it wasn't designed to fit in. Um, so this was the most appropriate and cost-effective method for myself at the time. Um, 
you know, and so far I've been satisfied with the results. Now, in the future, if I can get an intercooler set up for that intake manifold custom made, I would like to do that because ultimately I would like to put this car on the road course um, where you'll be in throttle longer and the temperatures will creep up more. And that would be the point where it would probably become uh, uncost efficient for me to go through gallons of boost juice at the same time. Um, so we'll see what the future holds. Um, anyway, I thank you guys for watching. If you're new to the channel, um, feel free to click the subscribe button. Um, and as always, if you guys have questions, comments, concerns, general outrage about the automotive community, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Um, I try to get back to everyone. Um, if you have other questions regarding my supercharger setup, maybe check out some of my other videos. I'll link a few of them in the description. Um, I have another autocross event coming up early in October. That'll be my last event with this car for the season. Um, so keep an eye out for the, my run videos from that. Um, and I hope to potentially be able to do some, you know, take you guys out on a cruise when I have time off from work here, uh, in the near future. That way you can just see how this car acts in a normal everyday driving around environment and what it's like out on the street other than, you know, just full throttle applications when I'm autocrossing. So again, thanks for tuning in today, guys, and we'll see you next time.